All right, and that's recording. Sweet. Hopefully it won't fill up my hard drive. <laughs> it's kind of spooky. It's actually sh showing me like how many giga how many megabytes I'm using and it's a very rapidly growing number every second. <laughs> hey, hey, John. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. So I've got the video uh, for yesterday or for earlier today. I've got it done. I just need to like play with audio levels and stuff. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing a hack night at work. And uh we had to make uh, a five we have to make a five minute video demoing our thing. It's mostly uh it's mostly a lot of clips from uh, a Marvel movie with Vision because the tool's called Vision after we name a lot of our back end components after Marvel superheroes. <laughs> so <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. So I I cut in little segments for demo day tomorrow. Tomorrow's yeah. So after this, I'm going to be uh, fixing sound levels on the video, getting rid of all the pops and stuff. By the way, Chris, Zach here is the uh, guy I took to the Ruby meetup last summer. Yeah, um, he's muted, and I don't know if he's hearing us or not, or what, but yeah. We have three people on this channel, or right now? Yeah. Uh, it's me and Chris and Zach and you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I was muted and wasn't paying attention. Hi, Zach. Hello. Hello. So I only know about the two Discord channels and the functional programming Slack. Are there other uh, and the St. Louis Tech channel, the Slack channel. That's all the ones I know about. There's, I'm sure there's other... Lispers seem to not be able to agree on anything, including where to talk to each other. <laughs> so... I guess we could hit up IRC if we really wanted to. I actually never actually used IRC, actually. Oh, really? You recluse us from the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I use it on and off. I'll have to start my Emacs up because that's how I get to IRC. Like a proper Lisper. <laughs> Emacs is my IRC client. So we we're, we're the what? The paper. Oh, I've got it downloaded, and uh, once we actually start, I guess I will um, screen share it. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to get the. Oh, I see view. Single page. There we go. Hide my thing. Turn, hang on. Now I can make this a little bigger. Holy crap! I'm already at 1.2 gigs on this video. <laughs> can you reduce the resolution, maybe? Yeah. Let me let me look it all up. Or what? How, there was like three minutes, and it was already like a gig. So. Oh, but I do have my external hard drive. I could just dump it to my... I could record to my external hard drive, maybe. I don't know. It still seems silly to, like, record, like, four terabytes of data or something. <laughs> uh, That'll be a lot. <laughs> For one meetup. Yeah. Have to buy a hard drive every month. How far did we get last time? Like we got... I think we're around page 24, 25, something like that. Do you know if that bug room guy is going to show up? I don't know. He, he mentioned about it last, I guess, a couple days back. 
So he's aware of it, that's for sure. Okay. I say we wait till like about, I don't know, five minutes or five more minutes or so, we can just start then. Yeah. Hi. You're muted. You're still muted. No, you're not. Hey, guys. I'm Sophia. Yeah, hi. I'm not actually going to stick around. I, I just got out of uh, a situation where I was on call. I We didn't... We didn't um, things didn't go bad. It's just that my fix required that we cause customers a lot of trouble, which got, you know, <laughs> folks involved. So I uh, uh, was in that for about two and a half hours, ending, like, seconds ago. So... <laughs> I think I'm gonna take a break and relieve my wife from her normal duties tonight. <laughs> but I did want to jump in and say hi. Miss you guys. It's been a while. Yeah. Howdy, howdy. I think we're gonna do this remote like this every time, too. And I'm trying to record it without using up my entire hard drive. And I'll put it on YouTube. Good luck. Yeah. Sweet. So right now I'm at Don't 500 me. megabytes for two minutes. <laughs> so I probably still need to scale so it down some all my heartfelt commentary there is now going to be on permanent record. Yes. <laughs> as permanent as YouTube is, at any rate. If we do it remote, how do I get free food? Ooh. I'll have right. to mail it to you or something. I don't know. You can show up at my place. I'll give you tacos. It's taco night. It's one of those subscription services and just have it in my house. <laughs> He's got it figured out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stop the video again and... Bad, bad road conditions? Uh, no, I left around two... And I've been working on that other oh. video since then, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. You've been at it for a while, then. Yeah, I'm not good at video editing. Hey, we've got a new person, too. Who's, well, Wilfredo, is uh, that how you say it? Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was trying to figure out my, uh, my, uh, my camp situation here. Uh, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Hi. Uh, I'm actually from Orlando. Oh, cool. Um, I'm on the Discord server, Zulu. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're going to try... This I think this remote thing is a good idea because there's only so many you, lispers you, in the world. Say again. You're uh, are you wait, you're Zulu or? Yeah, yeah, yeah Zulu. Oh, hi, hi. nice meeting you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still trying to figure. So yeah, I'm, sort of my camera here. <laughs> I'm I'm ID one on the uh on the Discord server. Oh okay okay, yeah I was actually gonna ask like who <laughs> who that was so hey. Yeah, I thought it was uh, a annoying pings I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. It was nice for you to actually like remind me and post a link because um, uh, this other guy, Bugram, he does uh, meetings like every Tuesday, and I keep missing them uh, either because I'm late or just because I can't find the link, and then I have to like fax through the history and everything. So, <clears throat> but yeah, I figure I sit in and either I'm able to contribute or I learn something. So either way. I'm not learning probably for me. I my my list isn't that great, so <laughs> Okay. So what is this group? Um, you know, I think uh Anis over here was asking on Discord like if there's a topic, so what what uh, what do you guys usually sort so, of like do? So the last meetup and I guess in the second part of this meetup I guess we're continuing is uh, we're talking about the list uh one point five paper. Or one, list one. Okay. List one, sorry. Yeah, and we got to page okay. 25 last time, and we're going to continue it on from there. Uh, so right. sort of like read it together. No, do you see that link, the paper link? It should be in, in the Discord oh, channel. Oh, you actually have one? Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know the Discord channel? Uh, right above, uh, you'll see the picture of the guy pointing to a monitor, I guess. Um, it says, uh, so if you start oh, yeah, 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 I see it, I see it. Yeah, yeah. You click on Grand Copy List, and in there there will be a description of the, uh, the paper where it's located yeah. at. Okay, cool. I actually have a downloaded version of that paper, but <laughs> oh wow, I'm. I mean, we're all so, whispers, right? So <laughs> how many times have you read this already? Then <laughs> uh, not not in depth. Uh, mostly, I I think I did what most people do. Uh, I look at the Lisp implementation on page uh, eight or whatever it is, and yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's the, more or less the extent of like what I've read. You know, thoroughly. I think last time you were marveling at the wonders of the, the M expression. Hmm. Yeah, and that's sort of uh, that's sort of what I think was cool. I was wanting to do a real in-depth 
look into Lisp originally, you know? And mm -hmm. this has been really nice to really dig into the first 25 pages the last time and hopefully, you know, a good portion of it this time and maybe keep this up and really get... Because it's already cleared up a lot of misconceptions that have been, I just assumed, were true. Uh, like, for example, I always thought that you couldn't, that you couldn't compile stuff in Lisp until late. Uh, apparently, no, from Lisp 1 in March 1960, you could compile yeah. stuff. They even did, gave, like, performance differences. They're like, hey, it's, like, about 60 times faster. So if you can, you really want to compile your stuff and all that kind of stuff. And whereas, like, there's lots of FUD saying, oh, you couldn't compile your Lisp until, like, you know. It's like, no, from day one. <laughs> and, uh... Other interesting things was like how little memory it was living in. It was was like sixty thousand words, and the words are something weird, like thirty four bytes or thirty something, something right. not not base too reasonable. I can't remember what it was yeah. exactly. <laughs> A lot of people take it or take uh, for granted nowadays that uh, eight bit bytes. Uh, that is uh, not the case historically. Yeah. Mm. And actually, non base two. Um, uh, words were relatively common on like list machines and everything because they would dedicate a couple of the bits for type tagging, which we do nowadays using like lower bits, like SPCL for example. Um, for like fixed nums, fixed nums are actually represented um, uh, as like regular integers, like actual regular machine words, but it's just the lower two bits are zero, and that's the type tag. And I think they use one for some for like floats or something or other. And then objects, so so the the type information is embedded in the machine word just to have it, you know, compact. But, it's only two bits that it can use for it, just to give not, you like a. Re it's not mapped straight like like C types are. Like, right. So fixed nums are. So fixed nums like if you get rid of the look. Actually, no. Yeah, since since it's the bits that it's using, I think. Uh, yeah. So you just bit shift it to the right two bits, and that's okay. your integer. Wow. for a fixed num. Um, wow. and, and actually that strategy is used uh, I remember when I, uh, when I was in college uh, I was researching uh, we were doing a lot of multiprocessor type things and I was I remember speaking with my professor because he had implemented like a, uh, a lock free vector um, you know he wrote a paper on it and everything and one of the tricks that he used was using those lower two bits um, which are uh, when you're addressing, when you're using pointers in a you know 32 bit architecture, those lower two bits are always zero anyway because you're trying to align on the word, ah. right? Because your your addresses is going to be every four bytes, right? You, you're never going to address, right? So what you would do is you would use those lower two bits for type tags. Um, he used it for like marking dirty and dirty bits for uh, like if something needed to be updated. Or if something was updated, but it needed to like lock next time, you know, you can do all sorts of tricks like that when you take advantage of the architecture. Just like uh, that's a lower level bit twiddling for sure. <laughs> but, I haven't the base. <clears throat> which Lisp, cha which channel in the Lisp Discord are we in? Because there's the FP Discord that has a Lisp channel. Which are we in on that one? Just Meta General so, something. I'm on the actual just Lisp server. Yeah. Uh, Which channel are we talking okay. in there about? Well, is it general or where are we at? In general. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see it now. Yeah. Are there other popular channels? I guess I had never investigated all of them. It seemed like the Racket and Scheme channel felt like separate worlds compared to the common Lisp channel. <laughs> so uh, on this server, I pretty much stick to like general common lisp um game dev right i haven't stuck my head in there recently just because uh and fiano has been doing like in-depth stuff with his with uh, some shader stuff with dj and so it's like i don't want this. to like intrude on that uh, he's also in the and fiano seems to be also in the racket channel too oh yeah i mean we're all we're all over the place you know yep. somebody posts a question somewhere else I usually read this server completely, except for uh, Racket and Closure and Scheme, but that's just because I'm a Lisper, so it's like, <laughs> eh, I don't really care about you guys. <laughs> well, I mean, I do, but, you know. <laughs> I'm totally intrigued by the chess scheme. I just can't find enough libraries enough. Like, it doesn't seem like 
there was a lot of people actually doing stuff with it. Right. But the list implementation by itself seems pretty pretty nice and seems pretty fast. But there's next like no libraries almost. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not familiar with the uh, that uh that landscape myself. I'm I pretty much I, I started with common lisp and I I looked at you know scheme and I uh, know my buddy got into racket for a little bit, but I don't know I I. I I didn't really see much of a reason to switch. Uh, I liked, I, I liked the libraries that CL had, and I liked the compiler, and I saw like potential in that. Uh -huh. And so I, I just stuck with that. I, I think as long as you're doing any of those, you're kind of good intellectually. You know, like it's good mental simulation if nothing else. <laughs> yeah. It's the old I saying, like even if you never use Lisp, I think it's worth learning it. It's to be aware, yeah, it's different, definitely, I find it a different way of thinking, that's for sure. Mm. Yeah, me, myself, uh, I did Common Lisp during my Masters, and uh, I played with okay. I played with a bunch of other things just before that. I looked at Scheme for a bit, and I looked at, I can't remember what it was, something else, and a couple of ML-derived things. And then I eventually settled on Common Lisp, and that's what I wrote all my code that went with my thesis. And then after that, I promptly went to work at an avionics firm doing embedded C with a little bit of assembler here and there, salting <laughs> it. Yeah, and then far other end of the spectrum. But now I'm been doing I've been doing closure for the last four years, which is seems to be about as close as you can easily get a job and be doing a Lisp. So. Yeah, that that seems about right. Yeah. And that's pretty fun. Um, Every now and then, it's a pain. Because of Java underneath the cover, but it Java <laughs> underneath the cover is the only reason why you can do stuff is you get all those libraries, right? So it's right. like it's a trade off. It's like oh crap, Java gets in the way, and but oh hey, you know what? I've got libraries yeah. for literally anything I want to do, so it's an I understandable know, it thing. Me wonder where um, I know that there was an implementation of a common list for the .NET framework. And I kind of wonder where that's at nowadays because that that's the same sort of thing. I mean, if you use .NET, you have ac you can do anything. Like everything is right there. Um, especially recently with Microsoft uh, pushing their um, .NET Core to where it's not limited to Windows anymore. You have all of, you know so many dot, so many libraries uh, that are now cross platform. So are there people like every time like on the the Discord channel and then on the Slack channels? The functional programming Slack channel. I, when I when people talk about Lisp, they seem to be always be talking about like something related to game development. Like yeah, other people who are. I definitely haven't seen people who haven't been doing it for something else. <laughs> so, I think the reason for that is that uh, this oh, server, is, like um, M. Fiano, uh, Michael Fiano. Yeah. He got. He runs the the. He does Lisp game jams. Um, he used to do them like bi yearly, but now I think he's doing them like once a year. Um, and he also, you know, he he pushes a lot of the game dev stuff, um, like as far as an organizer goes. Okay. Um, and he contributes libraries and everything. And so I think that's where a lot of people came to the server, like through him, you know, gotcha. through IRC or links that he posts elsewhere. So I think that's kind of where this servers came from. I see. I see. Okay. Um, so that's, I think are everyone, you, also, you know, are you also on the Slack, the Slack really channel to game dev somewhere, somewhere other. Are you also, are you also on the Slack channel? I, mean, also, I don't, the programming Slack or is that, I, I don't do game dev. Uh, uh -huh. there's a game that I really want to do and this is, there's a game I'm working on, you know, okay. but it, it's something that I don't, I, I wouldn't classify myself really as a, as a, as a game person. I like graphic things, but. Right, right. I'm more of a libraries DevOps guy. Gotcha. Okay. Because I see like a lot of like uh, like web development type stuff. I see like Hutch and Shoot and stuff like that. But I haven't actually seen mm -hmm. people actually talk about it. <laughs> they can't tell like. Right. Popular? Not popular? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's hard to gauge with a smaller community. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> yeah, I guess. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like. Oh, like, at least on this server, the only person that I know of that actively, you know, has projects up and running are is um, Michael Fiano and okay. um, 
like a couple of other people have little pet projects here and there, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the schemers and the closure people. Um, so there's a whole closure. Is, there's a whole closure uh, so, Slack and a bunch of there's thousands of people there. So, and there's a yeah, bunch of game dev. Of, there's a bunch of people doing closure game dev too and stuff. Yeah, it's, right. It's well, pretty I was big. Talking specifically about like the closure people in this server. You know, specific. Uh, uh, I know that enclosure is is uh, yeah. It's you got people everywhere <laughs> for for closure. Closure, yeah. <laughs> Definitely is the, the most popular list right now. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of it is like you said, leveraging uh, those dot net or um, Java dot libraries. libraries, and just being able to interrupt. I forget where it was that I read it, but uh, I remember somebody uh, saying, you know, how, how do we make Lisp uh, work again? And uh, one, one of their big, you know, points was have it not be, try to be special and have it actually communicate with other languages and other, you know, have it integrate with other things better. And Clojure is an example of that you know, of how powerful it can be to be able to actually interact with it um, from somewhere else and have it interact with something else, aka the, the Java. And it's like, yeah, like, sort of like a, a pair, closure is like a parasitic language. Like, it, it needs to have a host to survive. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like other right. aliens That's or something. Language, right? Yeah. <laughs> More so than the other ones, I guess, like, without, like, Closure script sits on JavaScript. Closure sits on Java. I guess there's a .NET edition of Closure. I guess too. Uh, there was for, but they dropped dropped it like near like the very beginning. Oh, is it dead now? Is yeah, it, it was it was killed before version 1.0, I think. Uh, or maybe there's some side project. Maybe that's what. Do you mean there's is there some side project? I know that there's a common Lisp on .NET. Yeah. I, I hadn't heard of a Closure on .NET, but. So at the beginning, Clojure was being written. Uh, he was what's his name, Richicky. He was writing Clojure for both uh, Java, the JVM, and the .NET runtime. And so I think just before 1.0, um, he yeah. dumped. He just deleted all of the .NET <laughs> code base. He was just like, no, I'm de- no, not going to happen. I don't. There might be somebody else doing it. Because I know there's a lot of, there's been a lot of efforts for other languages too. I don't know if somebody is doing .NET, but I don't really do Windows or .NET at all, so I, I'm not right. exposed to that. There might be somebody else out there doing it. Like there's Iron Python, and I think uh, there's a Ruby one. I think it's Iron, also Iron Ruby. So mm-hmm. maybe there's an Iron Closure. Yeah, um, there might. Yeah. All right. Want to go to the paper then, I guess? Or... Sure. Um, I'll share the paper. If I can remember how to share application window, this thing. Share. Present to everyone. Aha. Uh-huh. Yep. Wait. Yep. Okay. okay. Do you see that? Yep. Uh, is it showing the whole page or just a little chunk of it? How's that going? Looks good. I see the first page. But the whole page, top, top, top to bottom. Okay, I wasn't sure. In my, in my thing, it looks like I'm just getting. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's just in my preview. That's weird. Google Hangouts is being silly. So we were. Yeah. So this is the paper we're going through. It's the Lisbon Programmer's Manual from March first, 1960, and this is basically the first real documentation of the language, right? And um, it, it um. It, it we went got through about 25 pages or so let's see uh, we'll do a summary since we didn't record that one yeah IBM 709 704 oh it was on the 704 and they're preparing it for the 709 ah mm-hmm. oh, here we go it's using 12,000 of the 32,000 memory. And that means words. And words are something weird. On page 10, right? Uh, yeah, page 10 yeah. as far as the numbering and of the pages in the top, yeah. 
Uh, let's see, what else is cool here? Yeah, here we go. Values of compiled functions are computed about 60 times faster than the S expressions for the functions could be interpreted and evaluated, which is pretty crazy. Oh, and this flexo writer thing, that was that was basically a terminal, so you didn't have to do cards. That's right, and yeah, that we were showing a picture of that last time. Yeah. The, uh... the flexo writer. How did you do the screen share? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sharing right now. Are, are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? Um, let's see. What else was interesting? Oh, he, so here's another thing that was irritating is they're trying to, most of this document is not in S expressions. It's in M expressions, mm -hmm. which is a real pain in the butt. But apparently until the 70s, I guess, a bunch of people were still trying to pu push M expressions for Lisp. Okay. Including yeah. including uh, McCarthy himself. He was just like, no, it should be M expressions. S expressions are pain. It's just like, I guess he didn't. Yeah. Like, and eventually he gave up. Eventually he gave up. <laughs> so, so it makes it hard to read a lot of these things. Because we end up having um, this kind of stuff. So you see this P arrow bit? That's basically conned. Is what this is doing. So like one less than two, therefore four. One greater than or equal to, therefore three. That's basically a cond is what's going on here. Um, okay. Yeah. And so he's actually defining functions. Uh, so here we here we go. He's trying to say how do I do a recursive definition, and he's giving your standard GCD and square root examples and a few few others. In factorial. It's funny how all these examples are also still used today, like in our modern textbooks. Yeah. Um, I guess they sucked for him, or did they just they thought that these were the best things to do? <laughs> well, I guess everybody's who's been exposed to math has been exposed to the GCD and the square root and a bunch of these other ones, so it makes sense. In factorial. True, yeah. true, true. Yeah, and so here, here he's defining how you can do and or not. Uh, what's that last one? I don't know what that last one is. Anyway. Um, that weird cup thing. Um, yeah, don't... Sure. Let's, um, I don't want to say it's implies, but... Maybe? Anyway. Oh, so Lambda Calculus. <laughs> He's going on about lambda calculus. And here we go, label. So this was the other interesting thing. He basically defined label so that he could do recursion right here. And again, it's in that weird M. Expression. Yeah, that weird M expression Intense. version of the con. Yeah. how it manually typed all the Greek letters. Yeah. Like the epsilon, you could tell somebody just scribbled it in on the paper. <laughs> oh yeah, in the in the credits it actually tells who who typed the paper up. That's the secretary. Yeah, I can't remember her name. The, the, preface, the secretarial work. Yeah. Okay, and so here we finally get around to explaining what an S expression is. And uh it looks like we can't put dashes or anything like that in our symbols, maybe. I'm not sure. Because they're just squishing them together. It's like even worse than camel case. Like on the bottom, apple pie number three. Um, yeah. Explaining how lists work. Con, conjoin, you know, your standard list style list with conses. I like how they use the, the, the dots in the center and how we type the, uh, in theory, we type them with the regular dot periods on the computer. Yeah. That'd be a cool little tweak. Oh, here we go. So here's when you're starting to really have just, um, like this bit here. Oh, I can't highlight the sections. That sucks. But anyway, where I'm pointing, you've got, yep. uh, this is basically M expression notation, right? So instead of doing paren car, 
SpaceX, close brand. You do this kind of a thing. It looks kind of ish like C Python style. And you get like semicolon becomes a special thing as opposed to just a comment. It's kind of weird. And um, so then, yeah, he's just basically at this point starting to define stuff, right? Your standard bits of the language. Adam's already there. Um, and the definition is all in terms of these M expressions, which is kind of hard to read. Yeah. Uh, equal car or, oh, there's, so there's multiple equals. There's EQ, EQL, and I think equal spelled all out. You've got car and CDR. You've got cons. What else do you have? Okay, here's recursive X expressions. This FF thing, I don't think that's still defined, but it's a useful little thing for some of the other definitions. It's a pretty short little definition. It sounds like actually something that it occasionally would find useful, so I'm kind of surprised they didn't leave it around. Uh, I guess. Or what, sorry? Oh, so we've got this FF function. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, and it's used in the definitions of other stuff around here, but I don't think it's still there in the language. Value FF is the first atomic symbol of this expression. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe first form. That is bizarre. I think first form is my guess, is what they were meaning by it. But it actually sounds like a useful thing. It's basically first atomic form. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you basically get your leftmost deep tree thing whatever you want to call that um but yeah with with ff you can then define some other stuff like um i think subst did that one need it no but yeah subst is there is there oh is it where yeah uh point number two on page 15 Oh, okay, yeah. Page 24 of the actual PDF. Because of all the preface, yeah. Yeah, so here's the other equal. So we've got EQ or a couple pages ago, and we've got equal all spilled out, and how to define that, which is a pain in the butt. Um, append among pair. A soch is already there. Say again. What was that? Is among still around as a function? Um, Not in common list. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know that one. I don't know if that's in Probably some part of this enclosure, but... So this is basically contains, is what it looks like. Almost. Maybe? But it seems like a deep contains is the thing. Oh, yeah, okay. At least that's what I'm... Well, let me see what definition says. So, Y is not... Uh, so, if X is among Y, if Y is not null... Okay, so it is a shallow. It is shallow? Okay. Yeah, it is just looking... It is a, basically a, a member with a equal test. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's a shallow one, just looking at the top level. Yeah, and I can't remember how you say that in Common Lisp. But that's basically contains. Uh, if I were gonna replicate that, I would I would use um, find with the test being equal, rather yeah. than the default, which is EQL. Yeah, I don't think that we have and EQL. The reason you want it to be equal is yeah, because e EQL is um, uh, the only difference between EQ and EQL is that EQL is well defined for numbers and characters, for which this has a really uh, you know, gotten to this is dealing with just with symbols. So EQ is sufficient here. Yeah. So we got pair. Uh, a social is still around and still with that spelling, I think. Yep. <laughs> I've always called it a sock. Or a sock. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good one. Like, yeah, is it a sock? That's a uh, and then a shoe to undo it. Yeah. Or go around it, yeah, yeah. 
I wonder why they forgot the tea in some of them. Yeah, so I noticed that that I don't think any of them are more than six. So I wonder if it's just like a rule that they have to be at no more than six. Because was Fortran used to be just six, right? I know that earlier they were mentioning, like, uh, like early in this paper, they were mentioning the switching to symbols as opposed to single characters. Yeah. Um, okay, so some character limits. But... Yeah, so mm-hmm. they've got an example apple pie number three. That's way more than six. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Huh. So, yeah, you're limited to the 47 characters available on an IBM 704, which looks like it's all caps. And I guess you get caps and numbers and probably a couple of basics things, but you don't get full ASCII even, much less Unicode. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It, it might... It, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's something that for some weird reason they're capped at six because they wrote it in something else underneath the hood or something like that. That would be I'm really cool. Uh, they have, they do have a... Yeah, so... Yeah, it'd be really cool to... Actually, actually find the code. If we could, on this one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if we could actually find the code for this, that would be really cool. Yeah, because they have like a little bit of code to Lisp one. I don't know if that's laying around. That'd be pretty cool to see. Of course, then you'd have to learn how to read IBM 704 <laughs> assembler, which is probably <laughs> which is probably quite a task. Um, Subless. Yeah, that's still around. Ah, here we go. Representation of S functions by S expressions. Now, what is this? This is basically saying that, yeah, we can write Lisp. We don't have to write M expression Lisp, I think, if I remember right. So S functions have been described by M expressions. We now give a rule for translating M expressions into S expressions. Yeah, so and basically... One should be making certain computations with S functions and for answering certain questions about S functions. Yeah, so this is basically... Okay, they're basically. I guess they were thinking you would occasionally drop down to S expressions if you really had to. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're reading about now. Yeah. So, like, here we give a translation. Oh, and they're using commas too. Well, yeah, like everywhere. Look at that. Like that. Like that. In the middle, it's like this notation is writable and somewhat readable. Can we make it easier <laughs> to read and write at the cost of making its structure less regular? If more characters are available on the computer, it would be improved considerably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, if he'd just indent it, instead of having it be a giant run-on sentence, it'd be a lot easier to read. I mean, I guess it's very subjective, but... I, I mean, I can't read them. I don't understand M, M expressions, and I can't read them worth a crap. But then again, I, I've, I've always had trouble with any sort of mathematical notation, and that's that seems like that's what it's trying to emulate. Yeah. So it's a matter of conditioning, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it it might be a conditioning thing, but <laughs> Yeah. So but apparently then again, they're also used commas everywhere, which I mean Yeah, if you get rid of the commas and then you just indent it right, that section right there right. is perfectly readable to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I suspect if that the label above it, untranslated, if we just indented it a little bit better, instead of it being a giant run on, it would probably also be a lot readable too. Like I can sort of I can right. it read it ish. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a little bit hard because it's just just sort of splat it out right there. Instead of being like right. indented nicely. Yeah. Well, well so, this is also back in the day. Yeah. Like spaces were expensive, so <laughs> Yeah, we only have so many of them. <laughs> uh so the only reason why he tells us about s expressions being a thing and s functions as he calls them here is because we need them to run into apply which is a thing so here's apply mm-hmm. um and did we already have the lambda as a thing because he's using it here i didn't i don't know if we had already seen that yeah yeah, yeah. He talked about it before he introduced labels, and that's actually why he introduced labels, because he said that Lambda was insufficient for doing recursive functions. Oh, uh, okay. Which is not, you know. Um, it might have been back then. Uh. Well, 
I don't know. Was uh, was the fixed point uh, operator like discovered back then? The fixed point is that the which one is the fixed point operator? Uh, to, yeah. to be able to do recursion with purely anonymous functions in Lambda calculus. Oh, like the uh, the thing you use to get the Y combinator. Fixed point, yeah, yeah, fixed point combinator. So, like a Y combinator is, I think, a a type of fixed point. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was like later. That was like the seventies, right? Yeah, I think that was so. the scheme people that figured that, that out. The, the the Y combinator operation. I think so. Right. Oh wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I, I know it was later on. That that's why I like. Early in this paper, he says that the lambda is insufficient, even though it isn't. But I don't think that they knew that yet. <laughs> wow! So nobody just I tried think it. That's fascinating, yeah. Fixed point combinator. I'm gonna Google it real quick. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the history of it right now. Like when? In computer sciences, combinatorial logic, according to Wikipedia, a fixed point combinator or a fixed point combinator is a higher order function fix that for any function f that has an attractive fixed point returns a fixed point x of that function. Okay. When did this show up? I think they have a... They talk about the y coming here. And the references they talk about, uh, the papers are like in the 80s, but I'm pretty sure it was there before that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything. Yeah, I feel like that should be right there in the header. I'm confused why it's not. But... Oh, well, I, I don't mean to distract with that. No, no. No, this, this no. whole thing is a giant distraction. That's how. <laughs> Distractions are great. Yeah. Yeah, we're still not caught up to where we were last time. We're just summarizing basically right now. Anyway, I'm on the page for Lambda Calculus trying to figure that out because they have a section for it, but yeah, yeah, okay. So, we, so now we've got apply, which let's see, apply lambda. So, you're giving it a lambda and you're giving it two values, and it gives you back the result, which makes sense. That's what it used to do. And still does. Oh, this is an interesting little footnote. Note that the apply operator for the 704 version of Lisp 1, as described and used in the rest of this manual, is not identical with this apply function. Interesting. There's apply and the other apply. Yeah, why would that be the same? <laughs> uh, let's see. The S function apply is defined by... And that's pretty easy, except for that you, then you have this app Q and eval. And here's eval. So you have to do eval now. Yeah, I don't think app Q is still laying around. What is that doing? Uh, I'm trying to figure that out myself. So if, if M is null, then it's null. Yep. Where M is, uh, oh, so app Q is getting in M. M is in my, okay. and that is arguments. Oh, okay. So we've got a function, which is a lambda, F, and then the second argument is the arg list. So if we want to apply foo oh, to XYZ, where XYZ is 1, 2, 3, right? Args would be 1, 2, 3. Foo is foo. Uh, app Q args, so it's basically a list. So the list not, is not null, or if it is, you return nil. If it is T, wait a minute. Oh, so that's that's the otherwise. That's right. Okay, so this is like cond, right? So null, nope. Okay, so T, that's the otherwise, the else clause, basically. Otherwise, you do the cons. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, they didn't explain the else clause. They should do that. They'll do that later here. I don't yeah. think so. I think you just use these branching things, which are basically cond. Like the so little arrow. Doing, yeah. So what that's doing right there is it's going through. Um, it's quoting it, I think. I, 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 might, I, 
I might not be parsing this correctly, uh, but it looks like he's building up a uh, like a list of quotes. So he's just taking the art list and putting quotes in front of each of them. Uh, um, and I'm guessing that's in order to get the symbol names as opposed to evaluating the... You know what I mean? So like you get the list of XYZ, not like the list of XYZ and evaluate XYZ. Oh, so apply quote. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I right. think. Okay, because, apply. Yeah, the, the quote... Right, right. Okay. And then there's the eval, and that's a lot more complicated. Uh, but here, it's a little bit clearer that this thing is a cond. That weird little bracket arrow yeah. semicolon Again, doodad. As you said, the yeah. Yeah. It yeah. yeah. If only they used it the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, an ev EV con? That looks like eval... The cons? No, Eval the... Eval, Eval the so, what? Uh, EV con. So okay. you've got AppQ, Eval, EvCon, and Evlis. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. I think I'm going to head out, guys. Have a good night. Oh, All okay. Right, so. Talk to you later. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, so let's see. Oh, how are we doing on video? I'm checking. Uh, 1.4 gigs at 40 minutes. So that's... So, depending on how late we go... Yeah, that should be under, like, 3 or 4 gigs. So, that won't kill my hard drive. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So, let's see. We've got... Oh, so they explain it in the next page. You know, I think we were, we were right around here, actually, is where we were. I don't remember actually going into this. Maybe we did. They go and they go into apply again later on page forty something. Yeah. So 40, I think. 46, yeah. Forty six or page three something document. Yeah. So I think this is roughly where we were at when we dropped off last time. Yeah. So, so. So apply itself forms an expression representing the value of the function applied to the arguments and puts the work of evaluating this expression onto a function. Eval. It uses appq to put quotes around each of the arguments so that eval will regard them as standing for themselves. Yeah, so it ap apply quote. Eval EPS arguments. If the expression. If E is not atomic but car E is atomic, then the expression has one or more of the forms quote E or atom E or EQ, E1, E2, or cond, or car, or true cons or some other function where f is an atomic symbol. Wait, what does that mean? If e is not atomic, but ca the car of e is atomic, that, okay, so that means that you're basically, you have an atomic as the leftmost of that list entry. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the case quote e, the expression e itself is taken. In the case of atom or car or CDR, the expression e is evaluated at the appropriate function taken. In the case of equal or cons, the expressions. In the case of con, the p's have to be evaluated in order until a true. Oh, so here's p con actually defined, and that's so they finally yeah. Until a true p is found. Yeah. Con before they find the simple if else case. Well, I don't know if they if do. They actually have an if then else in here, or they just use con everywhere. I don't know. I don't yeah, remember. I think right. they use con everywhere. Okay. Yeah, which works. So wow, that means that con came before the if, the yeah. if clock. Wow. Yeah, yeah con is one of the original ones. And then you just define if then else as a macro. So. <laughs> <laughs> to con. Yeah. yeah. Do the generic first, and then you're good. Yeah. Uh, the evaluation of a label is accomplished by evaluating. F label. I will, like they go. Well, I guess this is like the high level theory. I guess here they're not showing them F. Like in certain like like is it in common list? Do they show up the end of the the end uh, con being true? I guess like instead of having else, just have true. Yeah. So usually you put a for your 
else clause, you you put a T. Yeah, which is sort of yeah. what, what you're essentially saying is so con will, um, you know, con evaluates the the condition, and if it's true, then it evaluates the the the, the then part right of each clause. So if you put a T, that always evaluates the true. Yeah. Whereas so that acts as your default else. So, whereas in closure, the standard thing you would do in that situation is colon else, which accidentally works because, well, not accidentally, but you know what I mean? It's like, well, a symbol is true. It's truthy, so therefore. So you could do colon whatever yeah. you want. And, and that's essentially, yeah, and that's essentially what cond is doing, you know, when yeah. you put a T there. It, it is, theoretically, what it is, is it's checking for the T, but at, uh, I bet you that a lot of compilers probably make some sort of optimization based on like oh yeah that's a t that's a, that's the else branch you know yeah i guess you could use a symbol as well yeah you can put pretty much anything in there yeah anything uh, that's truthy mm -hmm. yeah all right sorry <laughs> got sidetracked sorry <laughs> <laughs> um it's not yeah con is defined before the, the simple if, if clause but that makes sense. It's more generic. I think if is more primitive. Yeah, because it's just so it's just I mean, a it's paper. It's it just, doesn't matter which. Like you have the same expressive power, but I think if is actually more generic because it uh, it specifies like both branches, whereas right. one technically yeah. only specifies one. One. Hmm. Okay. Add later in the paper. So I guess the first part is this is like the high level theory. The second part is like more like the application manual for the implementation of Lisp. Yeah, this was meant to be the programmer's manual, but being a Lisp programmer back then meant you were probably an AI researcher. Right. So this is like the theory side, and the other half of the paper of this paper seems like more like the, the programmer side, the implementation side. Yeah. The Lisp PC. PC. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, difficulties involving collisions of bound variables arise. And it's like, ah, oh, that's the best thing about macros. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, the map. Oh, so they didn't. I don't yeah. think they had macros yet. Yeah, they had something else, like f expressions, or something weird like that. I don't know if we get to that yet. Yeah, so here's map list. XF. F is the function. X is an argument. So if X is null, then you do nil. Otherwise, you do cons F of X. Oh, so your map, that's, is that, that's basically map car. Isn't it? Map car, you mean? Is map list to map car? I think it is. What map list? Yeah, this ma map list. Yeah, there yeah. is this map car. Yeah, that's map car. Okay, I wonder why they renamed it. This is essentially the Polish notation for functions, there, except uh, there is a map list or map list. Well, wow. <laughs> oh, there is. Oh, there is. Yeah, there is, but uh. The, so there's a common list we actually have map c map car map can map l map list map con and they all behave differently as far as like their um uh the way they process things so that actually i think so the difference between map car and map list is that um in map car you're mapping each of the cars whereas in map list you're mapping each of the uh con cells um, uh, okay. So that's the difference. And looking at that function, um, yeah, looking at that function, that is actually map list. Not uh, map list. Why can't I say list? Okay. Uh, that's actually map list, uh, okay. not map car. Because you'll notice, like, it's doing f of x rather than f of car of x. And it's doing on the c. Okay. Uh, yeah, map list is like map car, except the function is applied to successful sublists, successive sublists of the lists 
function is first applied to the list themselves and then to the CDR of each list and then to the CDR of the CDR of each list and so on. Yes. So okay. So if you look at that definition in the paper, to, uh, to change that from map list to map car, uh, <coughs> it's, instead of doing f of x, you do f of car of x. Uh, okay. Right, so that you're actually getting the car of the, the list, not the... That, the whole list. Right. Yeah, so I when I I don't remember ever using anything other than map car and map, ever. Right. Yeah, and I think yeah, there's a map v never, maybe. Like, so I always use uh, map car, or I will use uh, map c, which the difference is that it doesn't accumulate the result. That's from when you're doing side effects. Oh yeah. And uh, map map can and I think it's map con. Uh, are also basically the same, except that they use append on the results instead of cons. So that's used for, for doing like a filter function. Ah. Okay. And I thought there was a thing that was actually a filter. There was like a select or something like that. And I would probably There's just always remove, use that. Which is like a reverse filter, but then you can use rever uh, remove if not, or you can do remove with like a negated function, and that acts as your filter. Yeah. But... I kind of hate it. <laughs> I, uh, it bothers me that there's not a filter, but there's a remove. Because I feel like filter is far more useful than remove, typically. I thought there was a select. Maybe I'm not. No, I'm... there's... Again, there's a remove. There's a remove if not. That acts as your filter. Right? Yeah, maybe that's what I was doing. The, the reverse of it. Maybe I just did remove if not. All the times. It's been so long since I've done actual common lisp. Hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely use remove if not way more often than I use remove, which is ridiculous. Because I, I, again, like it, there should just be a filter. But yeah. There isn't. Oh, okay. This is you one know what of it my is? Little pet peeves. Yeah, I've been in closure long enough that I just forgot it. So f closure does have filter. So. Yeah. yeah. As does every other reasonable language. <laughs> Maybe I defined it in my library or something because I had a big giant library of all sorts of things and maybe I just or yeah. did it and I forgot. Think there's probably one in Alexandria. Okay. What is this? Diff. Oh, differentiation. Yeah, let's do calculus. <laughs> is this numeric or is this actually. Algebraic. Uh, I wish they'd indent things differently than that. Hmm. <laughs> New lines and spaces are expensive, man. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Especially when you're paying for the secretary by the hour. The derivative of the allowed expression as computed by this formula is plus times one plus x a y times x plus one zero y times x plus x a zero so did this actually do a symbolic differentiation or n maybe they haven't defined numbers it has to be a symbolic differentiation yeah but there's so many more rules to differentiation than that um well, right, but it might be, it might not be uh, a full-on actual algebraic differentiation as much as it is a, um, like, you have, you have a function that you're applying in D of X for that, you can define it, like, not empirically, what is the word I'm looking for? Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh. Yeah, so, oh, okay, here it is. X, X plus A, Y. That's your, the equation that they're differentiating. And that becomes 1, okay, X plus A times 1, times 1, times Y. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. That's weird. I need to look into that a little further. 
Another useful function with functional arguments is search, which is defined as xpfu. If x is null, then it's u. Oh, unfound. I guess you're searching in x for p. Wait, what does this mean? The function search is used to search a list, a le less it, for an element that has the property p. Oh, property p. And if such an, so this is, and if such an element is found, f of that element is taken. If there is no such element, then the function u of no argument is computed. So this is basically find first and apply a function. Is the property here representing a function or? Um, do we use it up here? Do we use search? Maybe we use it next. No. Oh, that's a weird one too. <sighs> All right. What do we at now? So Lisp primer. The features of Lisp described in this section. Oh, so we had a whole new section now. Permit the user to define a number of S functions and then compute the results of applying them to arguments. Hey, you can define your own functions. Imagine that. And you just say define instead of... Well, this is interesting. So one of the things that does annoy me about Clojure, even to this day, is def in versus def un. And then you got define. Wait, uh, but actually define was still a thing in Common Lisp, right? Define's still a thing in Scheme, too. The Scheme, but not in Common Lisp. In Common Lisp, you use define. Is it yeah. just def but there I thought there was still a def was there still a define? No, no. There's a like define is used as a part of other things like define condition, define Yeah, okay. And there's uh, there's all the other def things. I was wondering yeah, def fun, def var, def macro, right. but there's no actual define anymore. Right, right. There's no define. That's a scheme thing. Yeah, pure scheme thing. <laughs> the rapid thing, I guess, too, in a sense. And, and part of the part of the reason why it's not in common Lisp is because define uh, define just defines a thing, right? Whereas in scheme, you have uh, the functions and variables are in the same namespace. In common Lisp, you have two namespaces for them, so you oh, so define becomes kind of ambiguous whether you're defining a variable or you're defining a function. Therefore, yeah. you have def var and you have the whole list one versus lips list two argument right okay. which is not a legitimate argument just because of the fact that there's way more namespaces than just one or two yeah it's list uh, five versus classes, list six you have methods you have you have a bunch of other things that are also namespaces just they're not functions or variables mm -hmm. yeah it's list five versus list six or something like that it's more like list friggin twenty something really. Yeah. You have you have functions, you have variables, you have classes, you have conditions, you have um, um, handlers, you have restarts, you have uh, tags, you have ta um, catch blocks. Like there's there's a lot. <laughs> there's really? structures, there's slots, there's and, I mean, that's already at, like, 11, just from that. Mm. And those are all each in their own little namespaces, so. Really? I didn't realize that, that for a common list. Interesting. Yeah. And then you have packages. And the, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot there. <laughs> there's actually a library for, uh, for defining namespaces, because so often you'll do that when you define a macro or something like um, that it's good to kind of package it up as a formal namespace with all the common operations interesting oh no this is interesting it's defining multiple functions too it's not just one at a time in common list can you redefine a name like in closure you get a namespace you can change the name of the namespace you can say you know namespace Imports blah 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 as who I guess. So <laughs> when I when I'm saying namespace here, I don't mean namespace in the Java sense. I mean namespace in the 
um, like C sense or like common list sense of like a function. You know, if I have the symbol X, right? That X means different things in different namespaces. So X in the function namespace means the function X. X in the variable namespace means the variable X. Um, X in the class namespace means the class X. You know what I mean? So a each namespace has a different meaning for symbols. I see. That's the name that I'm talking about. The namespace in Java maps more directly to common list packages. Okay, okay. A package is like a collection of symbols. Okay. Yeah, and so the thing I just noticed here is that it's multiple functions in a single define, not just one at a time, like a defin, which is kind of weird. So it's more like a let block almost. Well, except for it's, I think they're global, but. But on the downside, you have to do even more parentheses. <laughs> Using columns I one. Also notice that like the top defined isn't an an S expression. It's a. I'm not quite sure what that is. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't realize that. And I like it's the. It's not an N expression either because it's. It's basically just a single line directive type thing. Yeah. Huh. That's weird. It's probably kicking off some special parser. Basically, just sees define paren paren. And he knows what to do right. on that line. And I love how they mentioned using columns 1 to 72 of as many cards as are necessary. <laughs> how many cards do I need? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, oh, wow. So it actually has to have... Oh, wow, that is really weird. Yeah, it's, so it's define, space, print, print. And then the closing is close, close, and then open, close. You see that? They actually oh, do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that has to be some sort of like uh, whatever they built it on top of. Yeah. Whatever sort of preprocessor or something that they <laughs> tossed it on. Oh, I love this. So the commas, they're just now leaving off the commas. Did you notice that? Oh, wow. And, yeah, and, good. And read discrepancy number one. The commas in writing S expressions may be omitted. This is an accident. <laughs> like they, I guess they didn't want you to be able to do this. <laughs> Wait, I need to read this section if, because that's amazing. <laughs> If they, if basically they were confused and couldn't figure out how to make it force me to do commas. Repeat discrepancy between the situation as it is and what might be expected from the previous chapter should be. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. I haven't figured it out. It's on the bottom of my Trello board. We'll get to it. This is, a, this is absolutely amazing. <laughs> so it's like, oh, no, no, no. S expression suck. We're totally going to be using M expressions in the future, I swear. Also, commas mandatory. Neither of those things. Yeah. There. Yeah. It's like, oh, we uh, would we would do it, but eh, it's hard to make it force it. So just know you should use the commas, because otherwise you're a bad person. That's amazing. <laughs> and like I've heard the the history of uh, the M expressions. I've never heard about this comma thing. That is <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, because if we go back to the older S expressions, then like this this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad they couldn't figure that out. Yeah. Huh. And they even mentioned that. They're like, a few discrepancies between the situation as it is, meaning <laughs> how we got it to work. Yeah. yeah. Here's yeah, the code. Yeah. It's a version 0 0.1 <laughs> or version 1, but yeah. yeah. Oh, and here they're talking about the apply. Uh, you remember how earlier they talked about how the apply as defined up there isn't quite the apply that they use in the rest of it. Uh huh. Because right. they didn't quite get it figured out. What? So the definition of apply in the previous chapter, one would expect to have to write quote t in designating the lower left, the leftover case. For convenience, our apply allows and in fact requires that t be written instead. So it does actually do something branchy. It must be t, and it can't be quote t. Yep. Uh -huh. We write null or and not. 
Notice also that this doesn't have the uh, the general idea of generalized booleans. It has to be T specifically, whereas in common list, it's anything that's not nil. No. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You can use dot. No you cannot use dot notation. Huh. Whereas you can do dot notation in a common lisp. That's how you do a pair. Like a con cell. You do, yeah. Yep. I wonder how you do it. Oh, you, there we go. We actually, they actually have to do cons, the function. I guess they didn't figure out how to get the dot to work because it'd be in the middle. It's much easier just to have the cons be a function and use that logic over. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I... Like, I kind of wish that the dot were in common list just because it, it's a it's a weird uh, a weird little wart most of the time. It's or, not as bad as the yeah. commas that didn't happen. That's true. <laughs> that is true. I have to be thankful about that. Or the I'm semicolon. Or the semicolon things. Yeah, well, that's the whole end expression. Yeah. And now to the fun the applied function, like how do you <laughs> Yeah. Running triplet. Um I'm not sure what I'm reading here. I'm gonna go forward. Yep. The subst or we're just doing a substitution. Oh oh. Yeah. This is a weird format. Yes. Yeah. Debugging. Oh. Hey, we've got yeah. track list. That's still a thing, I think. Let me see. Not in, not in common list, at least. Isn't it? That sounds familiar. Well, there's a trace, which uh, you tell which functions to trace. That's sort of what this is, isn't it? This is a trace. What? Yeah. Figure out. It's, it'll it. say the. Uh, inputs and the we'll print out the arguments and values of each of the inputs oh oh this is basically saying these are the functions you want to track right okay yeah so this is this is trace basically yeah yeah and the whole parentheses at the end notation it looks like that's just the you know for the for the very top level of an M expression, the way you translate it down to the syntax here is you, you take that top level one, you yeah. write it out as its own symbol, then you put its arguments in parens, and then you put the open close parens at the end. Yeah, this is something weird right here. Yeah, this because track list isn't. Yeah, and neither is the, yeah. So the one we were just looking at as well, subst mm -hmm. and track list, yeah. and of course define their their own special unique snowflakes. Hmm. That's interesting. The weighing algorithm for prepositional calculus. I remember we were reading about we were, we were mentioning that the last time. I don't remember what was interesting about it though. An extension an ex, as an extended ex, and there's the reference. As an extended example of the use of a succession of functions function definitions to define an algorithm, we give a Lisp formulation of an algorithm for deciding whether a formula is a theorem of the prepositional calculus published recently by how wing why was this oh this is actually in the paper that predated this i remember right and in the original the, there's a thing before implication by conditional all handwritten in yeah i was gonna down. say I, I read this paper you know not thoroughly at all i more and just skimmed it multiple times and i never realized that those symbols were <laughs> yeah what was this i think they're just using this as an example Is this a theorem prover? All of them are theorems and the original sequence is a theorem and we obtain a proof 
Otherwise, you get a counterexample and a disproof. So, I guess so. Oh, hey, yeah. This is, <laughs> for example, given any theorem of Principia, we can automatically prefix an arrow to it and apply the rules to look for a proof. When the main connective is the, that's, I think, the implication arrow. Their implication is that little cup guy. It is simpler, mm -hmm. though not necessary, to replace the main connective by an arrow and proceed. Now, I assume this is the Principia of Whitehead? Or is that Whitehead, right? Not Newton's Principia, so I don't know. <laughs> I think it's that. Uh, the what's his white? Yeah, it's Whitehead and uh, somebody else. Russell, Bertrand Russell, and Alfred North Whitehead. Yeah, Principia Mathematica from the early nineteen hundreds. What year? Oh, and that they're using that weird cup notation. This is basically exactly lifted from Principia Mathematica. Um, yeah. Here, I'll share this real quick. Interesting. Um, if I can remember how to do it. Um, and by the way, probably the reason why they're using that notation, mm -hmm. I mean, the because uh, right. I don't know if it was a historical thing, but when I went to college, the, the arrow was used as implication, right? Or it would be like a like a a long dash with you know a greater than sort of symbol at the ends. But here they're already using that that symbol for something else. Mm. So they, they use it for implication. Yeah. Well, this is straight. So this is straight out of the Principia. I'm going to stop sharing for a second and share this instead. Uh, uh, application window. This one. Here's a here's an example lifted straight out of Principia. A little bit easier to read. A little bit better typeset. So he's lifting exactly their syntax from Principia. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and they actually have this, like, the, so we could actually look them up. I guess these, the way they're numbering, like 54, 43. In their example, they've got 245, 521, and then they work through proofs on that. Uh-oh. Yeah. I'm going to go back to the paper. If I can figure out where that is. Application window. Here we go. This one. Um... Okay, so do you see the paper again? I think you do. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so this is a... It, it proves that 245 is valid and 521 is valid. So this is a theorem prover. That's cool. We define a function as who... Oh, he's just doing that. I don't understand what's there we go. Okay. Yeah. We define a function at theorem S whose value is truth or falsity according to whether the sequent S is theorem. The sequent uh okay. Oh, they're giving the they're giving typed names basically. And here we have commas, unfortunately. And here's some horribly indented M expressions, again. I kind of want to. I kind of want to recode this if it isn't already out there and just give it a go. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I actually started typing one of the earlier ones up to try and figure out what the hell I was trying to do <laughs> with some proper indentation. Hmm. Yeah, I... I'm trying to figure out what was the purpose of having this included here. I don't understand, like, the, the bigger picture here. Like, Well, I my guess is that this was actually what they were using to justify the research. It's like, look, we're making a theorem prover. Oh, and by the way, we I made see. Lisp. Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Or it's just an example program. Like, hey, look, here's, here's something you might want to write. You might want to mathematically prove math with yeah. a computer. 
mm. or something. Yeah. That makes sense. I don't know. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. Oh, and here we go. Here's the actual S expressions for the same thing. So we have define, we define theorem. Oh, so this is why there is no defin because you literally just say theorem is lambda, whatever. Right, it's one, like, it's one namespace. Yeah, okay, okay. I didn't realize that lisp1 was a lisp1. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I just assumed it'd be like common lisp. -ish. No, no, because you have. Um, I mean, I guess. So, so the reason you know that it's not is because of the fact that earlier when they're defining apply, they're just applying the function by the symbol, right? Mm -hmm. So, like in common lisp, you, you have the symbol, and in order to apply that, you have to extract the function from it. You know, you have to get the the function the 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 function that is that symbol in the function namespace yeah whereas the fly that we defined earlier we just oh if it's car if the symbol is car then do this you mm. know what I mean? as yeah. opposed to like okay look up what function car it is yeah does that make sense yeah yeah and this is the way closure works right like defn defn is just a, a shortcut to do def and then the function right. name and then it's just a lambda. Right. Which is not lambda, it's fn, which is kind of irritating. Well, it's shorter. Yeah. It has that going for it. fn is a lot less to type than lambda. True. There's no, th1 you're and doing cotton lisp and you don't have uh, the uh, like font lock on Emacs, you're doing it wrong. Because all my lambda is, like, I write lambda, but it looks like an actual Greek lambda. Oh, that's cool. Oh, in your... Yeah. That would maybe screw up my indent every now and then, but other than that, it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, whenever I look at my code and not Emacs, I'm kind of thrown off like, whoa, where's all those lambda come from? <laughs> <laughs> so used to it by now. Yeah, this is like crazy. It's just on. Yeah, it's just a giant dump of code. Oh, and there's the end of it. <laughs> and it, uh, it's really hard to read because there's no indent. Yeah, so there's th1l and th1r and th2l. And uh, I guess this is thl and th, but it's like just a big squish of code happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this isn't uh, very burning friendly. They've got new lines at least to separate the functions, so that's something. <laughs> <But> <laughs> oh, yeah. Our gracious gods, they... <laughs> yeah. they're so kind. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then we're done, and this causes functions mentioned to be defined, and and we want to track th for some reason. Print out the, the values of the functions. Yeah. So when up to return. yeah, whenever whenever track whenever th gets called, it'll print its arguments and then run is what I think that is doing if I remember right. Mm -hmm. Which is a good way to track what's going on. Yeah. At least so in a list. Definitely. Th this section is definitely a here's a sample application. Here's how we're gonna debug it. You know, this is how you run it. Yeah, so this makes a lot of sense for being an actual programmer's manual. If I was given this, right. this actually is something useful. It's like, here's a big, ugly thing, and there's probably some bugs in it, and here's, yeah. This is practical. If there's not bugs in it already, there's going to be bugs when you <coughs> transcribe this over to your punch card. Miss <laughs> one weird parens or... Yeah. The secretary or computer, the people that was back when I, that was a person... Yeah, yeah, needed a little bit more coffee that day. That was the, the true quote unquote programmer. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the person who tie you had who the person who actually made the punched cards was considered a programmer at that point. Yeah. Or maybe not. Maybe that was a different word, but yeah. 
There's a person who did that for some people. If you weren't like a lowly grad student, you'd have people do that for you. So we're theorem, arrow P. Okay, so we're saying we're going from P to P or Q. So it's the weighing algorithm. I need to read about that. Oh, it's just basically is it a tautology? It reduces tautologies. Okay. Um. And now we get back to like programming system. Kafka API. <laughs> yeah. Various ways of defining. <laughs> yeah. Use of numbers. Oh, they actually do have numbers. That's nice. I wasn't sure about that. The program feature, which is somewhat Fortran-like feature. This is prog, right? Like prog and go to. And finally, the list compiler is described. Okay. Huh. So, okay, we have apply. And that's, oh, oh, and this is the real apply. And this is the synthesis of apply and eval. And this is probably a lot, this is looking like it's probably a lot closer to the modern apply. Apply yeah. function to a list of arguments and a list of pairs. What's the pairs? Uh, let me get this away. There's apply f. X and P. Let's look at it. Oh, it's for dynamic binding. So P, there's the dynamic environment into it. Um, like, do you guys know about dynamic versus like special variables versus flexible variables? Actually, not actually. Okay. So the way that the interpreter is that list one point five and older lists work where uh, they all use dynamic bindings. That means that if you have, for example, a variable X in a scope, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't like directly correspond to, uh, so I'm trying to figure out a good way to like, can I screen share? Uh, yeah, let me stop I sharing. So. I think I need to no, stop here. here. Okay, now you should be able to. Yeah, so if you go to if you hover on your left, you'll see a little green arrow thingy. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Oh sweet. Okay. Hold on, let me share that screen. That'd be perfect. So no, not so like if you have a function here, you know. Okay. And say I do x, right? Give me the value of x, but there's no x defined in this scope, right? Okay, all right, right. If down here I do let x5 and then I call fn, what that apply is doing is it's gathering up, every time that you define a variable, um, it adds it to like the environment. And whenever you apply, it kind of like, in there it's explicit, like that apply specifically takes in, you know, x.5 to say, hey, x is bound to five right here. Okay. And then that way, whenever you see a variable that is, whenever you're evaluating a variable in list 1.5, you're looking at that environment. Yeah, so you have that hidden uh, environment right here. And for, and so X really translates to like, the get, you know, X in the environment. Ah, uh, okay, cool. Or, 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 or cuter, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? Like, uh, that, that's that's what that P is representing, is the, the environment. Because I it's still dynamically scoped, as opposed to flexibly scoped. OK. Uh, OK, gotcha. Thank you. That makes me a lot more clearer. Let me on the screen share. That is definitely oh, weird. Oh, there it is. Got it. Cool. Cool. Thank you very much for that. And I'm gonna yeah, kill... unless you like sit down and implement one. Here, I'm gonna kill the video um, for a second uh, and restart it. Sure.
Uh, I stuttered. Okay. I think I. Oh, he just dropped. There we go. Um. Hopefully he'll come back soon. There he is. There you are. Hey. I'm good. And I started a second clip because I wasn't sure how many gigabytes before my thing went to get angry at me. So. Uh. Okay. Let's go back to the paper. Where were we at? Um. Uh, I lost my video again. Oh well. This one. Sure. Present it over there. Like this. Oops. That's not where I wanted to be. Let me try this again. Sure. Maybe. Okay, there we go. There it is. I yep. see it. Alrighty. Um, let's see. We were looking at the supply operator, and we were like, "Why is there an X and a P?" And there you go. It's the uh, free variables. Is what they're calling it here. In addition to arguments, which is interesting. Oops. So if we, oh, and you don't have to specify free variables. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, so you can have lambda. You, so you define a function, or you're applying a function to this lambda. You're applying this lambda to a, b, and c, d, and with no free variables. And the result is a, d, because it's taking, what is it doing? It's taking the car of y, which is the a, b, and that's the a, and the c, d, r of z, which is the c, d, which is d. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, I want to see an example, and there's car. I want to see an example of with free variables here. Okay, here we go. So, ah, okay. So we've got Z is the list B, and A is the X. So we're taking lambda that has a Y. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. And that's just basically defining the rest of the environment. So you don't have any out scope outside of what's in these then at all, do you? So as you call in, yeah. so your initial environment is completely empty. Um, and then every time that you call a function, that function's arguments, uh, basically any sort of binding that you do augments the environment. So it just pushes it into the front of that list. So when you call a function that has x and y as parameters, then x and y are now in the environment. So any function that you call after that, if they reference x and y, it'll go to that. Does that make sense? So once I've done this, z is elsewhere too? Z is just there now? Is that what you mean? So it, it's only until the function returns. Okay, so, so once I'm done with this apply, it's done. Right, so once it's uh, done with the apply, um, because let me go to the pages that you're at. There you are. Um, because what it should be doing is it should be passing a, forward a cons as opposed to actually modifying the environment. Okay. So it's basically passing forward an environment that has those new bindings in the front. But then when you come back, right, you, you're back to your environment, which doesn't have those. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, let me see. So it basically sees just for this little section then. It doesn't stay around. Oh yeah, because it's doing it's using subst substitution to make it actually be a thing. It looks like. Sorry, I'm trying to do this thing. Huh. I like how 
they switch back to using commas? Just sometimes, yeah. <laughs> A program for the Lisp system consists of sequences of FXP triplets strung together. Uh, which means the okay the apply operator automatically operates on each triplet in turn and returns with the value of the triplet so uh, can we give multiple things to apply so we do call apply a bunch where is apply i passed it up Oh, so basically you, you run apply, you run apply, you run apply, you run apply over and over again until you have your everything. Okay. Huh. Okay. Definition of functions in Lisp. In chapter two, functions are connected to their names only through the use of the form label. In the current list system, there are two further ways a function can be defined. Uh, machine language subroutines, which is like, I guess, why we got current CDR. Or maybe by the Lisp compiler. In either case, the, in the, if a machine language subroutine defines a function, the association list for the name of the function contains the indicated subber to indicate that a subroutine exists. Subber in turn points to a transfer instruction of the form txl subroutine comma comma n, where n is the number of arguments of a function. So it's a function lookup table type thing. That's what they're talking about. And they've actually got, well, association list console looking diagram going on. Um, okay, so that's basically they've written a function in assembler or in whatever and you're referencing that. Otherwise, it's expert and then it's pointing to an S expression in the next cell. Okay. Huh. Uh, hold on a second. My dog's insisting I open the door. Yeah, because I guess there's some functions that they, you know, you'd have some basic amount of functions that would have to be defined uh, in the machine right. itself. And then the rest, you just write S expressions. You just write in Lisp to make them happen. And that's what's going on here. A function defined by an expert, an expression, may be already available in the Lisp system itself, in which case it appears among the functions given in section 9, or it may be defined by the user by using the define function. Define is a pseudo function, it's not a real function, whose effect is to assign definitions of the expert sort to functions. The autom atomic symbol for the name of each function to be defined must be paired with the X expression defining that function. A list of such pairs is then given as the argument of define. The apply operator defines acting on define of this argument creates for each function to find the expert structure shown above. If expert is already of the association list for a function, it is changed to point to the new S expression so you can redefine. And then there's your define of two functions. Okay. Oh yeah, and then yeah, it shows you how to define those Yeah, the most important thing here, I think, is the uh, that difference between the ex experts and the uh, uh, subbers, which yeah. are the, the machine code. Subroutines. Yeah. Yeah, subroutines versus expressions. So you have both. Yeah.
Various kinds of functions can be used in list programming. One way of classifying functions is to divide them into functions and pseudo function. A function in Lisp is evaluated for its value as such, whereas a pseudo function is used for its effect rather than its value, e.g., define or compile. Ah, so it's basically when they say function, they mean, uh, I guess we would say a pure function these days. And yeah. and they when they say pseudo function, they mean an impure function or like a procedure or what have you. Yeah. Yeah. But. I don't know how strict that is because there's nothing stopping you here from calling an impure function from a, you know, calling a pseudo function from a function. Yeah, and that's what they say next. There is no difference in form, however, between functions and pseudo functions. And this right there, that sentence is why a lot of the real FP zealots hate Lisp. Is that one sentence right there? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's very funny to me whenever anyone says that Lisp is functional when it's like the most unfunctional language you will ever see. It's a uh, its whole foundation is based on uh, mutation. Like that is what what Lisp is at the core. Yeah. In this section, the classifying distinction will be made instead on the basis of the form of the functions. There are atomic functions and compound function. All right. If the f of the fxp triplet for the apply operator can be stated as an atomic symbol, the function is called atomic. All other legal forms are for f are grouped under the heading of compound functions. I don't understand what they mean by that. Uh, when the apply operator evaluates a function which is atomic, that is represented by an atomic symbol, it searches the expression. Oh, as opposed to having a lambda on the left. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It searches the A list for the symbol either as a subber or an expert. If either is found, the function description where it should points to is used to evaluate. If neither is there, then the P list is searched for the function's atomic symbol. Which is the uh, that that environment? Have, yeah. So it's either yeah, a. Unless you basically have stuff in the environment, so like local definitions, like labels. Yeah. Um, as or you can have like the global definition, which is the in the p list. Yeah. Compound functions. Yeah. So or your other option is you just straight up pass in a lambda label or funarg. Funarg. What's a funarg? <coughs> FunArg has not been discussed previously. It was introduced for convenience in writing the 704 system. Need not be concerned for the user. Since they actually don't want us to use that one, how much you want to bet that that one's still around? <laughs> uh, FunArg. I don't know what that is. It sounds like it's, uh, yeah, so it's not around. It's something to make it easier to work with the IBM 704. I was half expecting it to still exist just because. <laughs> I, I don't see it in Common Lisp. Yeah, I've never heard of that. to tie the correct p list of pairs to the function of which apply is operating. Oh. Understand. Apply funarg fq xp is the same as apply f xq. Okay. Where q is the list of pairs to be used in place of p in evaluating f of x. Huh. Okay. Okay. Well, it said it's need not concern the user, so I I'm, lost that one over. I'm sufficiently not concerned then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh the apply operator pairs the dummy variables x1, x2, xn, dummy variables. The list of dummy variables can be a null, the null list. 
Oh. How are they representing Eric? They're saying they're they're calling the arguments to the function or the p parameters the dummy variables. That's kind of funny. Or here, and then they call the other the arguments. If the two lists are not of the same length, an error stop occurs. Otherwise, the list of pairs. So you basically have to have the right amount. Okay. Otherwise, the list so of pairs. Huh? Like, what do they represent by an error? Like, an, an otherwise, an error. Is, I guess we talk about chapter eight. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it says an error stop. So I'm assuming that's something specific to the machine. Uh. Yeah, it's probably your card stop loading, and you get your list back in the morning with nothing <laughs> done. Yeah. <laughs> The machine shuts down, everyone goes home for the day. <laughs> Whoopsie, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. App val, app val one. That's interesting. See chapter eight for how errors happen, yeah. Atomic function arguments. Okay. Yeah, notice, so you remember how earlier I was trying to say um, about the environment being expanded? Yeah. So right there on page 46, it talks about the fly operator pairs of dummy variables, um, blah, blah. Otherwise, the list of pairs is added in front of the, in front of the P lists. Um, then the third argument of len list for the function is evaluated using the enlarged plist. But okay. that doesn't modify the original plist. Okay. You know, in the, the original environment. It just passes along in the large one, but then when it returns, you still have yours. Or the one that was at that point. Yeah. Interesting. Because you're, when you think about it, when you, when he cons at the beginning of a list, you're not actually modifying the list, you're just kind of adding elements to the front that point to it, just because of the way that consoles work. So automatically you're not, it's not a mutation that you're doing on the on the list itself. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, okay. Well, so we're already about movie length, so maybe we want to Call it a call it a day and pick it up next month. Sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. This no is time. yeah. We're fifty six pages through on one sixty five, so we're making relatively progress. progress. Yeah, I think we're about twenty pages in before. So yeah, but yeah, we we've got about an hour and a half, I think, of video now, maybe two hours. So, <laughs> and I'll try and put it up on YouTube in a couple of days. Or somewhere. All right, well, thanks for hosting. Yeah. This was definitely interesting. Nice to meet you, too. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I'll see you guys around on the yeah, so Discord. Hulu in the, the Discord channel, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Sigor, right. I think, on that one. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's how you post. Yeah, Sigor. Yeah. Are you guys on the uh, IRC as well? I'm not. I'm occasionally, but usually not. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious. I'm pretty much dedicated to Discord. I will occasionally hop on RC, but I probably should start doing it just to announce these, just see if we can get a few more people. But yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. See you guys in a month. Take care.